and I have now the pleasure to introduce Caroline Wiesner, <coughs> who is co-director of the Bristol Center for Complexity <coughs> Science and professor at the University of Bristol. Uh, Caroline began her work on information theoretic representations of complex systems at the Santa Fe Institute. Uh, she made original contributions to information theory of complex systems and is lately writing about the general mathematical framework for information and communication in complex systems. Please welcome Caroline Wiesner. Thank you very much. So here's my speculative contribution to today's discussion. How stable are democracies? Even the best trained scholars in political science assume that extreme events are not going to happen. This is what the Harvard scholar Monk writes for the Journal of Democracy in 2016. Political scientists are not naive. But predicting extreme events is very, very hard, and one reason is that they are so rare. Here's another person who is certainly anything but naive, Axel Springer, who founded and owned the Springer Company, which is the largest European publishing company. And that company had a policy for all the newspapers ever since the 60s to, whenever they referred to East Germany back then, they put DDR, German Democratic Republic, in quotes, which was to say that A, they didn't believe this was a proper country, and B, they wanted to emphasize that they were convinced Germany had to be reunited. On the 2nd of August 1989, the company dropped this policy and decided to defer to East Germany just as a proper country, like any other. And we all know what happened three months later. The wall fell, and just one year later, the DDR ceased to exist. So it's clear that predicting extreme events in social systems is incredibly hard. Ben Benanke, third person in my list of non-naive people, said in January 2008, the Federal Reserve, who he was the head of back then, is not currently forecasting a recession. Mm -hmm. We all know what happened in 2008. Financial crisis hit the entire globe, and in fact the US entered the worst recession since the Second World War. So what is it about these extreme events? Are we really so clueless about them? It's my question. Now, what does a physicist or a mathematician say about extreme events? So here is a picture of a mathematician about an extreme event. This is a function 1 over x squared. We all know we're not allowed to divide by 0. So as x comes closer and closer to 0, the function explodes. And in fact, we call this a finite time singularity. I'm sure most of you know this. Finite time, because if you think of x as time and say, years, within one year the thing explodes, okay, finite time singularity. And clearly it is predictable. And this has in fact been used, a very simple fact about mathematical functions, in a prediction that uh, a group at the ETH in Zurich made when they looked at the data of housing prices just before the financial um, crisis in 2008. So sales prices of houses in the United States and if you do some mathematical analysis, but even you can already see it with your, with your blank eye, that this data increases more and more and more. That's the whole point, that the increase is increasing. Okay. And they predicted in 2006 that the housing bubble would burst in 2006. Now, they were off by two years, but they got the gist of the problem clearly right. The bubble burst in 2008. And all they did was looking for finite time singularities. So what I want to say with that is that we're not entirely clueless when it comes to extreme events. This is just a very simple but quite powerful example. What about democracies? Here's some data by the Freedom House, which is an independent watchdog organization. They made up a democracy index, which goes from one, which is best, to seven, which is worst. And you can see Austria has one, North Korea has seven. And it collected data over the years 2005 to 2018. And I'm just highlighting here two countries, which is Poland and Hungary. And they have been declining ever since, more or less, ever since 2005. They're heading downwards. What does it mean? I have no idea, but it's a worrying fact. 
And in fact, the European Commission has now filed a lawsuit against Poland for breaching basic democratic rules. Can we predict anything about a democratic system? I don't know. We had a workshop in January this year in, in Bristol where we collected all these different sciences, political science, economics, psychology, math, philosophy, physics, computer science. And one thing we all agreed on, that is we don't even know what it means for a democracy to be stable. What does stability mean? Stability has different meanings in all of these sciences and in some of them it has more than one meaning. So the first thing we need to do is define a question. And what I want to end with is that attacking or understanding a complex system is not just about data crunching. It's about understanding and defining a question. Thank you.